Good evening, welcome to evening prayer. And right at the beginning of tonight, we want to stop, to breathe, to slow down, to be still. So to do that, let's just become aware of our breathing. Let's try to breathe a little more slowly and a little more deeply. We light this candle as a reminder of Christ's presence with us. And Lord, we thank you that when we're aware of you and when we're not aware of you, you are present with us. And in this moment, Lord, we choose to make ourselves aware of the presence of God with us. Lord, we've all come from very different days, very different experiences, so... We ask God that you would gather together all our scattered thoughts, all our worries and concerns, anxieties, the pressure of our present circumstances. Lord, lift those burdens from our shoulders. Recenter us on Jesus. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Replace our worries with joy. Replace our anxieties with peace. Amen. Tonight we're reading Psalm 30 and we are praying for civic leaders tonight in our 10 days of prayer. Now uh, the church and uh, God's people before the church uh, through scripture have an interesting relationship with political and civic leadership. Uh, The history of the church shows that when the church enters fully into political leadership that it has quite quickly had to compromise the way of Jesus and has lost its identity. We stand far more comfortably in the tradition of the prophets who hold political power to account. But tonight we want to pray for our civic leaders in a different way. We're praying for them as men and women, as children of God as individuals who God desperately loves. When we look at them from that perspective, we start to think of the unique pressures that a civic leader experiences, the unique position that um, their role puts them in. And so, There's some words that are quite appropriate in Psalm 30, a psalm that was written by a king, uh, by a civic and political leader. Um, He shares some of his heart, which is towards God, longs that God would rescue him from his enemies, which you're never short of if you're in any kind of leadership. And um, there's a brilliant bit in verse 6, which just catches something I think when we're praying for civic leaders when I felt secure I said I'll never be shaken but when you hid your face I was dismayed um security that sense of security or or insecurity when someone becomes a public figure when someone's actions invite uh criticism when someone's uh family can become 
um, kind of visible through their work. Security is a really important word here. So as we pray for our civic leaders, as we pray for uh, these men and women to turn to Jesus, to repent of uh, sinful and selfish ways, to pursue the way of love and forgiveness, we also want to pray that God's going to be their security, that God's going to bless them, that um, yeah, that it's the kindness of God that will lead them to repentance. So let's pray together using Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favoured me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To you, Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise ye? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Let's just use those words of Psalm 30 as a, a jumping off point as we pray for our civic leaders. And Lord, we want to begin by thanking you for every man and every woman who um, gives their time to serve. Who gives their life, Lord, to serve uh, communities in this country. Lord, it is a it's a high calling, it's a noble thing. And yet, Lord, we know that it's entangled with so much which is not noble. Um, Lord, we know that there are people who are attracted to power for, uh, for selfish reasons, for reasons which are destructive for them and for those around them. And so, God, we want to pray, um, just as David prayed, that you would spare him from going down to the pit Lord, we pray for our political and civic leaders um, that they would be spared being dragged down into a pit of cynicism, being dragged down into a pit of selfishness, being dragged down into a pit of having to sell themselves and promote themselves. Um, yes, Lord, for those who um, enter into civic leadership, Lord, it cannot be long until that um, that public spiritedness, that servant heartedness is tarnished. Oh Lord, we want to pray the reverse. We pray that you will call out that public spiritedness. You will call out that servant heartedness. Holy Spirit, come. And Lord, we want to pray for our leaders as they feel the weight of their office. As I ha they have that feeling of being exposed, that um, every decision they make is rightly scrutinised. Um, but there's an element of that, Lord, that their hearts need protected from, that their identity needs protected from. Lord, that um, their success or failure is not measured um, in those terms. But Lord, it is you that declares their worth. Lord, you have made them. You love them. Jesus, you died for them. 
And that is where the, the worth of each human being comes from. Lord, we long for our um, civic leaders to know the, the worth and identity that comes from Jesus. Lord David says, um, I cried the mercy I cried for mercy. What is to be gained if I'm silenced? If I go down to the pit? Lord David's uh, rem- reminding you, reminding himself that because of the position you've given him, he can uh, magnify the name of God. He can praise the name of God. He can um, lead people in following you as he talks about the good that you've done in his life. Um, and so Lord we want to pray that we want to pray that uh, men and women who uh, who are our leaders um, may be able to speak of you um, not in a way which is about claiming freedoms not in a way which is about um, demanding the dominance of one culture over another culture uh, Lord we, we're tired of that stuff we're tired of that culture war nonsense Lord, but may uh, men and women be able to speak uh, honestly, passionately, simply uh, about what it means for them to follow Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lord, may there be um, leaders in our land who, um, who seek to enable uh, the way of Jesus to be lived out in this place, the way of love to be lived out, the way of forgiveness to be lived out. Yes, Lord Jesus. And we pray for those leaders, what we pray for ourselves, that you would be turning us away from every wickedness, every selfishness, more and more to the way of Jesus. And we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Please continue holding up our leaders in prayer. They need our prayers. Uh, And most of all, pray that they will know the love of Jesus for themselves. Grace and peace be with you.